you know, the the Bills uh, have a have a public relations uh, crisis on their hands of sorts. What Charles is going to be the fallout uh, from the Matt Ariza situation? It just doesn't feel like it's going to be as neat, clean, and easy as we've released him and we're moving on. There's still a lot of questions to be answered on the part of Bills brass, isn't there? Yeah, because there hasn't been a real description of. Um, the amount of time, there was clearly a, a time gap that passed when they first initially heard about what these allegations were and then ultimately the filing of the civil suit. It's clear that they knew prior to the filing of that civil suit that um, allegations were being made against him and um, yet they, you know, they made a move. They made a move. They cut a punter, you know, to keep him, uh, you know, essentially made a choice moving forward that he was going to be on the roster. And it wasn't until, yeah. And, and it wasn't until the, the lawsuit was filed and then um, details started to come out. And I, I still think it was reactionary. I still think it wasn't until everyone, you know, it, we, we just went through this with Deshaun Robin, uh, Deshaun Watson, where Sue L. Robinson, the arbitrator, the first arbitrator in that case said, the league is a reactive league. Um, they, they are, you know, forward facing, but not forward looking, you know, they're not, you know, they, they react too much. And, and we see it. It's not just the NFL's you know, it's not just Park Avenue. It's the teams themselves often find themselves in spaces to react to this um, type of thing. So, yeah, I think there's going to be questions about what what was told to you that made you feel like, OK, this is this is something that, um, you know, we're going to stick by him. And I thought it was interesting when Brandon Bean was talking about the decision, the process when he was cut. Um, one of the things that he said is that you know, he said, I'm just a GM. He pointed at Sean McDermott. He said, Sean, just a coach, you know, um, there are a lot of different versions of this story. And he basically said, we don't have the ability to, to find out what is the correct version. Honestly, if it, that, that didn't change, it didn't change from the moment you were told, um, initially, right. and then it didn't change when you released them. It was the same throughout. So why would it's you still not an have accusation? Made yeah, right. It's still it's just in lawsuit form, right? It's the same. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's so, I, I if there's fallout just to sort of answer that question, I, I wonder and you brought it up, but it is something that's collectively bargained. I do wonder if there's going to be a look at some point about um, whether or not the league itself, the league office can can step in and hold someone accountable for you know, this idea that while it happened in, you know, October 2021, he wasn't on NFL roster at that point. He wasn't drafted. He wasn't, as you said, in most corporations, in most jobs, you can be impacted by past behavior, regardless of whether or not you were working um, in that capacity at the time that, you know, something might have happened. So it it's not something I think the union would give up very easily, but I would be surprised if if that's not something that it, at least starts a conversation. Charles, I'm wondering if uh, any of your sources have uh, reached out to you and said, mm, I don't know. Uh, we had some questions, maybe not with the details that we have now, but we had some right. questions about the kid. That's why he went in the sixth round and not the third or fourth. Yes. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I don't want to get too deep. Like, I have not, I will put it to you this way. I have not had an organization tell me they knew this, okay? Um, but when this initially came out, um, yeah, there was a, there were a few conversations with um, individuals and other teams that said, you know, we weren't interested. We felt like there were some red flags around him, but they they were very specific in saying we did not know this specific um, red flag existed. Um, but they also would not provide exactly what it was that had um, taken them taken him off their board. And as you said, he went in the sixth round and. That was a surprise. Greatest, like he was someone right, greatest punter in college football history. You know? Yeah. And you know, it was funny because when it happened, what, what you heard is like, well, his style of punting, you know, you want someone who can do this or do that. There's certain, you know, he's got a powerful leg, but it's, oh, it's directional or it's this or that. And there was all these football reasons for, for it taking place. And then obviously this, this comes out right. and then, oh, well, maybe it wasn't football reasons. Other teams are now saying right. that there were, there were other things surrounding him that made them concerned. And will we ever truly know without an investigation into the investigation will we ever truly know who knew what and when 
We got about a minute left here. Speaking of uh, union league collectively bargained issues, I'm not, I'm not sure if this is collectively bargained or not. You would probably know better than me. But typically, the league defers to teams when it comes to discipline for behavior in practices or joint practices, the case may be. I was told on Thursday night that there were discussions at the highest levels of the league office whether or not that jurisdiction does or should, uh, their jurisdiction does or should uh, include joint practices in the aftermath of the Bengals Rams fight and specifically Aaron Donald's behavior. Is it just, are they going to leave it there with the Rams? Is in house, we're going to handle it, or is the league keeping a close eye on this, if not going to render some sort of discipline uh, when it comes to uh, the Rams and Aaron Donald? It's collectively bargained. Uh, as far as I know, everyone that I spoke to, the league does not have the jurisdiction to step in. The reason why it's always been left up to teams is because it's been collectively bargained that way. Now, that does not mean that there couldn't be um, a conversation about that in the future. And I expect, look, there's going to be the fall league meetings. If I attend those league meetings, and I would assume anyone else who attends those league meetings when, when Roger Goodell um, has an opportunity to speak with reporters, I would ask, why um, are you comfortable with what you saw in terms of Aaron Donald hitting someone with a helmet? And do you feel like, why is that legislated inside of a game, but not inside of a practice, particularly given that we've seen the Rams aren't going to take any action here, which I would expect, of course not. They're not taking their, their best player off the football field. All right, brother. Uh, we appreciate you. Thank you, Charles. Always. Hey, thanks for watching, brother, from another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.